Good morning, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living here in the heart of Las Cruces, where your center is still alive and well in all of our hearts. And this is where our vision is still a world and loving partnership for the good of all. I'm Reverend Bonnie, the community spiritual leader here at the center, and I'm also your practitioner in service this morning. I have been once again calling through our membership list to remind everyone that this Sunday, today, May 17th at 1 o'clock, we will be having our annual meeting via Zoom. The information should be in your email. It would have been sent out on Saturday. And you will be able to just click in and join us or call in. The information has been sent to everyone on our email list because all are welcome at the meeting. We will ask that members only vote. We will be discussing also during this meeting how the community wants to proceed in regard to opening up. We want to take things slowly, move at a pace that's comfortable for everyone, to consider each person's health and well-being of all congregants. And according to our mayor yesterday, or our governor yesterday, 10% uh, of capacity of churches is welcome to start meeting, and that would be 12 people. So we are thinking we'll continue in this mode because Randy is doing a fabulous job putting these videos together and getting them up on YouTube in time for Sunday. So we will discuss this, but our thinking is that we will keep doing this very slowly and continue doing YouTube for a while. It's also Randy's birthday. On Thursday was Randy's birthday. So all of us sing to him and see if he can hear us from around the city. I'm also exceedingly grateful to all of you who are giving your tithes and offerings through our website, mailing them in, or dropping them through the mail slot in the back of the center. We are a tithing community, and we continue to give 10% of everything that comes through the center. Uh, this month, La Casa is who is receiving our tithe, and their mission is to support those affected by domestic violence while striving to prevent abuse and promote healthy relationships among individuals and families. CSL, in the heart of Las Cruces, is happy to designate La Casa as our May tithe recipient and to support their mission. I also want to thank everyone who's been bringing items to the center on Fridays. Uh, the center and Unity have gone together to collect items to give to La Casa, things that their clients cannot easily purchase. And there's a list of those items on our website and on Facebook and in the email that is, was sent out Thursday. So Fridays at 1030, you can drive through our parking lot on Water Street, and people with masks on will gladly get your items from your car and collect them, and we will take them to La Casa. Remember also that the practitioners are available to pray with you over the phone. You can also zoom in or see them through any kind of video messaging way that you can and get prayer support from them. If you don't have the number to call the practitioner you would like to, call the office and we will have them call you back. We also have a new prayer request button on the website that has been put up for us since this time. And so you can put in your confidential prayer request through the uh, prayer button, and it goes directly to a practitioner, and we will pray over that as we are still meeting over Zoom on Tuesdays on your behalf. Now it is time for song, silence, and prayer. In this moment, I am clear. Thank you. 
So in this time of being separated physically, we recognize and know that the one spirit, the one life, the one God is still connecting us all through our hearts, our minds, our spirit. We are still one. We come together at this moment of celebration to recognize our oneness, to connect into that field of oneness and know that right now all in our community are well, We are grateful, we uplift them, and we know that this time together, this celebration today is blessed, that the words of Lillianne are blessed, and we give thanks for her presence and all that she has to share. So I just release these words as we say together in consciousness, and so it is. Today's reading is from uh, Hafiz, It's out of the book, I Heard God Laughing. Would you think it odd if Hafiz said, I am in love with every church and mosque and temple and any kind of shrine, because I know it is there that people say the different names of the one God. Would you tell your friends I was a bit strange if I admitted I am indeed in love with every mind and heart and body? Oh, I am sincerely plum crazy about your every thought and yearning and limb. Because, my dear, I know that it is through these that you search for the divine. And so it is.
This month, we are focused on the topic of listening to your heart, and today we are blessed to hear from practitioner Lillian Pilot. Lillian has spent much of her life as a spiritual seeker. From 2005 to 2013, she was the primary member of the music ministry at the Center for Spiritual Living, Edmonton, Canada, and she earned her Science of Mind practitioner license in 2012. We are thrilled, as usual, when she speaks for us, that she moved to New Mexico and started serving here as a practitioner, and that today she is our speaker. Please join me in welcoming practitioner Lillianne Pilot. Good morning, everybody. I'm delighted to be here. The title of my talk today is Good and More Good. And you might wonder, looking around the last few weeks or a couple of months, how good it really looked. But trust me, we're going to get to it. There's a, a corner on my desk at home where I have uh, some photos of my family, my nearest and dearest, encapsulated in you know, a few small squares. And two in particular caught my attention recently. One is uh, from when my boys were quite young. And every single time I went to uh, take a photograph of them, my youngest one, CJ, would poke or, or tickle his brother or do the, you know, do the bunny ears thing. So one day I said, CJ, just let me get one decent picture. And so as I clicked the shutter, he did not poke, and he did not tickle. Instead, he did this, which he thought was hilarious, and I recall at the time not thinking was so funny. The other one that caught my attention uh, was taken at my nursing graduation. I was 44. My mom and my siblings flew in uh, for the ceremony, and of course my boys were there, and it was actually the first time we'd all been uh, together. So we have this little family photo, and I'm in the middle with my, yeah, we did it, smile. And characteristically, CJ is striking a contemplative pose. And uh, Andrew's behind us, and the three of us are looking right at the camera. Now, just to my left is my mom, who has her eyes closed and her mouth open. It's a very uncomplimentary photograph. And to her left is my sister, who's leaning off to one side, and she has her eyes sort of half closed. She looks like she's falling asleep. On the far other side of the photo is my brother, who's leaning the other way, and he looks like he's thinking about something not very funny. But the photograph is funny, because there, in one tiny little square, are six people who are obviously having a completely different experience. Same place, same time, different experience. And I thought, that's really life, isn't it? We are all having a solitary and unique experience of the mind while trying to find some sort of relationship with the people in our lives and the world around us. And just as that thought came to me, a voice in my head said, these are the people who have come to do this incarnation with you. Love them and love yourself. Seemed noteworthy at the time. And I think it's true not only of our immediate family but, and friends, but also of, of uh, the world around us, everybody who's part of our earthly experience. All the people in your life have agreed to be part of your journey, whether it's easy or hard or fun or hmm, not so fun. Think of somebody who's been in your life or is in your life where the experience is, mm, let's say, less than desirable. And maybe you've carried bad feelings and, and maybe they've thought some you know, less complimentary things as well. But their presence has really taught you something. And maybe it's even started a chain reaction of events that have brought you to your beautiful and perfect self today. It's hard to think of forgiving them let alone thanking them. But I submit that at a soul level, they agreed to come and do this for you, even though it wasn't really going to be a great gig for them either. And now the whole world has recently come together in a whole new way, and this is also part of your story. 
Mother Teresa said, if we have no peace, it is because we've forgotten that we belong to each other. And what keeps coming to me is that I think for the first time in its history, this planet is united in one single event. People may be having different experiences of it, but we're sharing this pandemic with the whole world. In the past, whenever there's, there's been a crisis somewhere else, it's been somewhere else. And we might have compassion or we might be called to serve, but we're not in it. This is different. We're all in it. It's affecting everybody. And maybe the silver lining here is that we've had a global wake-up call. We can come out of this with a greater sense of humanity. We can come out of this with a greater sense of humanity. And if we can fan that flame, it could be the turning point for conscious living. Think that through. We can allow this new global awareness to grow a deeper sense of humanity and one that comes from the heart. Whatever your belief about evolution might be, I hope that we can agree that it's time for us to advance our consciousness as a collective for the uplifting and healing of all beings on earth and possibly beyond. When we practice peace within, we project it without. When we harness our, our power collectively to face the world with a singular focus, we are committing as a human race to evolve. My observation on social media during this time has actually been heartwarming. I see people finding gratitude and humor and positive activities, giving comfort and compassion, and I see them exercising incredible creativity. And generally, finding ways to make it all work with a lot less, certainly less toilet paper. It reminds me of a story a student gave his master, um, his Zen master, a present for his 70th birthday. It was a big box with a ribbon around it. And when the master opened it, it was empty. There was nothing inside. And he said, oh, thank you. It was just what I wanted. I, I wonder, and I kind of hope, there'll be a trend towards less consumerism. I know that I have spent way less money simply by not going out. Magically, I need less, and I have more money. It's working for me. But we humans are creatures of habit, and we like our creature comforts. We get nestled in our little corner of the world, and we think, okay, that's it. This is life. And we know there's other things out there, but as long as we're comfortable we tend to stay put. But that's not life. Life is constantly changing. It's the nature of life to evolve. It's the nature of humans to evolve. And when things get shaken up, as they have with COVID-19, people tend to freak out. Ah, it's all gone bad. But it hasn't actually gone bad. It's just gone different. We might lack some of our creature comforts for a while, and there have been losses, and on a personal level, this is painful. And my heart does go out to all who suffer. But in the scheme of things, the sky is still blue, the sun is still shining, and everything is still growing. Life is continuing on. And I'm actually really grateful that this happened in the spring because around us, things are growing everywhere. And it's that wonderful reminder. It is our nature to grow, and the evidence of growth is there. So go outside and feel the sun on your face and stand in one place long enough to watch a bud turn into a leaf. I think it's more important than ever to bring our awareness to the moment, to fully appreciate the moment, to fully appreciate breathing. By the way, uh, breathing deeply is extremely good for the immune system. So practice that at every opportunity. Breathe deeply, unless you're in a grocery store. But it's interesting, uh, as a little side note, that this virus kind of seeks to interfere with that breathing process, but that will be fodder for another talk another time. I know that being at home 
has presented many challenges, both economic and personal, but perhaps as the world has slowed down around us, there's been an opportunity to mirror that within. You know, we often hear, as within, so without, but maybe in this case, without has given us a template. So can we keep that going once we resume um, our daily activities? For those of you who think that one small action can't have any real effect on the world, I'll ask you to think about that again. As you go about your day finding ways to stay happy and calm during this or any challenging time, your focus on the collective good and a positive outcome for the planet is a powerful meditation. When we focus on the good within, we multiply the good without. We are fostering peace. We are stepping out of chaos. And over the last couple of months, humanity has been doing this in unity. We're staying home for the benefit of others and for our own self-care. And it's important to look after ourselves so we can feel good because that is what we're sharing with the world. So some Zen students were talking one day. And one said, my teacher is the best. He can go days without eating. And the second said, my teacher has so much self-control, he can go days without sleeping. And the third one said, my teacher is so wise, he knows to eat when he's hungry and sleep when he's tired. Self-care. So during this time of isolation, my sense is that collectively, we've had an opportunity to slow down and step away from the white noise that we've been living in, not just the chatter of millions of people out and about every day, but also the hum of machinery and the whir of tires on pavement. It's been quieter, hasn't it? I like it. In fact, there are whole levels of communication that are below the radar that have been stilled because we've had less contact with people. For example, our bodies store energy patterns. They store emotions. And our bodies are like a resonator, much like the, the body of a cello. When we speak, our sound is amplified and literally encoded with those stored up energy patterns. We move our sound through that resonator. We pick up those old emo emotions, and we spit them out with our words. And of course, this projection of old stored energy patterns gets even more special when the person you're talking to has lots of hooks to catch those vibes on the way by. I call it Velcro. These subtle body thought forms move around and we respond to them whether we're aware of it or not. And distance is not a factor. Got a chronic communication problem with somebody? or maybe a friendship that just went south for no apparent reason. If we're not peaceful inside, then someone out there is going to be picking up what we're putting down. For generations, this Earth's volume has been getting louder. More things, more sound, more everything, more sound. And maybe that increased volume has begun to shake the global rafters. Maybe. This cacophony has created a sort of collective attention deficit disorder. Maybe it's what's tilting the planet on its axis. Maybe it's what causes war. And maybe we should love even more the people who, from their waking thought each day, are not trying to make the world a better place. So if we do the work inside to clear our stuff, foster feelings of peace, that is what we will project onto the world stage. We are divine beings in a pretty nifty container. We have an inherent capacity to feel our divine essence. And we have freedom of choice. We can fill this container with whatever we want. We just have to be aware of it. 
I'm sure many of you have uh, heard about ho'oponopono. Uh, the simplest translation of this uh, Hawaiian word is to make right. And the practice is about cleansing ourselves in order to restore balance. It was made famous by Dr. Hu Len, and some of you will already know this mantra, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. Now that's Divine Love, capital L, I love you. I'm sorry for any role I have played in this situation across all space and time. Please forgive me, and thank you for having the courage to bring this in front of me, for agreeing to be the vehicle to bring this in front of me so that I have this opportunity to cleanse myself. Embodying the practice means each of us has 100% responsibility for what happens, not just for our own actions. If we take complete responsibility for our lives, then everything that we see, hear, taste, touch, or in any way experience is our responsibility because it's in our life. The problems that we witness in our external reality begin somewhere in ourselves. Total responsibility. According to Dr. Len, he ad advocates that everything exists as a projection from inside the human being. Someone named Sita Kalsa uh, wrote an article about Dr. Len and gave the analogy of a party. Everyone is at the same place, same food, same drink, same music, same atmosphere, and some will enjoy themselves, and some will be bored. And some will think it's really fun, and some will think it's eh, kind of lame, and some will be talkative, and some will, be, some will not. And if you were to conduct brain scans immediately, it would show how different areas of the brain have come alive in different people, and how different perceptions actually are from one person to the next. So it seems clear that whatever you perceive as your world is your world. It is the projection of your own mind. Ultimately, the practice is about cleansing yourself to the point of cleansing all subconscious memory. Clean, erase, erase, and find your own Shangri-La. Where? Within. Within yourself. The process is essentially about freedom, complete freedom from the past. And taking responsibility for circumstances around you doesn't mean it's your fault. It just means you're responsible for healing yourself in order to heal whatever or whomever it is that has come across your screen of awareness as a problem. And this is a big leap from, it's not my fault, I didn't do it, I wasn't there. That's, that's the mantra you can often hear. <laughs> And this is, I think, what it really means to be as one. We talk a lot about one mind, one source, about our unity as divine beings. And that's, that's a cool gig when we're talking about love. But maybe not so much fun when we're talking about being responsible to the rest of humanity. I hope that a taste of social distancing and living with less has increased our awareness of the great gift of living in this world. Imagine if even half the population moved to daily gratitude and self-cleaning. What if we woke up every day and said, thank you, thank you, thank you, God, I am so grateful for my life, and then spent the rest of the day practicing, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. We'd probably all fall on the floor as the planet suddenly righted itself. We've collectively had an opportunity to turn down the volume on our lives, to slow down, to contemplate, garden, cook, paint, fix stuff around the house. Instead of dashing off to work or to so-and-so's party or to this meeting or this engagement or to the store to buy the thing we really, really, really need. And I don't know about you, but I actually feel rejuvenated and interacting with others less has given me an opportunity to pay greater attention to my self-talk. Uh -uh. 
I didn't realize all of what was going on in there while I was busy being so busy. And I became aware of a kind of a low-level general pattern of negativity I didn't know was so active. I mean, I know what I want to believe, but apparently not all of my brain was on board with that. So how great to have some nice alone time with me for long enough to find out what I've been telling myself. Really, all I need to do is think about peace. And I realize a sense of peace has been settling within me. Life doesn't need to be so complicated by activity and social media and my own overactive mind. So here's a few more tips for inner peace. Breathe deeply. We covered that one already. Write your thoughts down. Look for repeats. Ask yourself, is this true? Get adequate rest. It really helps calm the mind. Listen to music that helps organize the mind, like Baroque or other entrainment music. Things that go about 60 beats per minute are good. Be in nature. Get active. Take a walk, jog, garden, whatever, and declutter your surroundings. Visual chaos breeds internal chaos, and sonic chaos affects the mind and the body, and they need quiet time every day. Decrease the use of social media and electronic noise. But do it right after you watch this video. Social distancing has been an opportunity to step out of the hamster wheel. We have to find peace within and grow it and project it. Because this is the change the planet is crying out for. You know, first responders know this when, when they come to the scene of an accident. They don't look at the victims and start yelling, Oh my God, look what's happened. You're over here and your arm's over there. No. They come up and they say, they speak gently and firmly and they say, It's okay. Don't worry. I'm here. You're safe now. Humanity's been crying. Our planet has been crying. It's time to listen to your heart. We need to love this planet and ourselves back into humanity, back into harmony, and we need to do it in peace. It's okay, planet. Don't worry. You're safe. I'm here now. And maybe, just maybe, this has been the global event to precipitate that, because I believe this is happening for us and not to us. It's happening for good and more good. So I know there's one unifying force in the universe. It's called many things by many people, but those names do not define it nor do they contain it. For how does one contain the essence of love? Love is the force field of realignment that heals all. And I know this force flows in me and through me and radiates from me. It is the current that infuses nature and beauty. It's the energy that fuels all of life. And so I know that even though I may experience things which appear challenging, I am always cradled in the arms of love. Love is handling this situation, I breathe deeply of the divine impulse and I feel it flow through me, every ion, every particle, infused with this beautiful, radiant love, working its way through my body, nourishing and healing everything in its path. Even in the dark of night, a meadow of flowers all budding and ready to blossom, know the sun will shine and they will raise their faces to the light so I close my eyes and I imagine I am one of those buds, lifting my head towards the light, feeling the warmth and vibrancy coursing through my veins, opening and opening until I am fully bathed in this healing, warm, bright energy field. It spills over me and flows through me, 
filling me with a powerful sense of well-being. This is the essence of the divine, recharging my cells and creating the perfect climate for healing. This is love. And so I know this power for good is at work right here and right now and that I am fully supported in every way. I conduct my activities with clarity, focus, ease, and grace, divinely guided, divinely listening, unfolding in the power and presence of peace and love. And I am so grateful. I'm grateful to know this, grateful for all the support and help that is ever present, grateful for the guides and teachers along the way, from the crow to the hummingbird and mountains and flowers and whistling of wind through the trees and the stars in the night sky. All are here for love. I'm gifted every day with some sort of message, urging me onward and whispering in my ear, remember. And so I say these words aloud. I know they are universal, and I release into the love, knowing the work is already done in the mind of the one. And so it is. Thank you so much for joining us today, May 17th, for our Sunday celebration. We will see you later today on our Zoom annual meeting. Blessings, stay well, stay masked, and stay healthy. And so it is.